The Cannabis Heals Me Podcast, episode 110. You're listening to the Cannabis Heals Me Podcast, where we explore the real stories of real people who have discovered the profound healing properties of the cannabis plant in their own lives. Find more at CannabisHealsMe.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cannabis Heals Me Podcast. This is your host, Rachel Kennerly, and it is really good to be back with you guys. It's been forever since the last podcast. It seems like maybe life is returning to some semblance of normalcy. So I've actually been able to schedule a couple of episodes, and good Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, I'll actually have an episode maybe Thursday, and then maybe next Monday, and maybe we'll actually get back on track and have our weekly Monday episodes. But You never know. Summer's coming up, and it's a crazy time of year for people during summer, too. So who knows? But if you know anybody that wants to share their story, have them reach out to me. Send me an email, podcast at CannabisHealsMe.com. I would love to talk to them, love to let them share their story, open the floor up to them. And if they've never done it before, I try to make it as painless as possible. In fact, to date, so far, in the 110 episodes that I've done, not one single on-the-job injury Um, with the exception of maybe a paper cut on my end. But as far as I'm aware, on the interviewee's part, there have been no physical damages. So rest assured, if you send your friend to me, I'm going to take good care of them. So thank you once again for for coming back, and and thank you for, for sticking around, even though it's been over a month since we've done an episode of the podcast. But man, it's just craziness out there so hopefully you know like i said maybe the the craziness is behind us and we can just move on and maybe life will return to normal in whatever you know state that is where you live here in texas it's not too bad we've got some additional social distancing recommendations but you know not too draconian here as it seems to be in some other states so i count myself lucky but we haven't been affected by this virus like a lot of people in other states have so Definitely fortunate on both fronts there. If you haven't done so already, if you want to make sure that the next time, hopefully in less than a month, that the next podcast episode comes out, if you want to make sure you get alerted to that, be sure you subscribe to the podcast. Go out and click the subscribe button, and the podcast app that you're using will automatically download that to your app. You'll wake up, you'll look at your podcast, and you'll go, and the hallelujah course will come on. Hallelujah. And you will see that there's an episode of the Cannabis Hills Podcast waiting for you, hot off the presses. You only get that if you go out and subscribe. So I encourage you highly to do that. While you're out there subscribing, man, I would love it if you would give us a rating or review. I know how many people download the show when it comes out, and the numbers of ratings and reviews are not even a smidgen of that number. So if you would go out and give us a rating or review, Yeah, I would sincerely appreciate that. And the reason I ask you to do that, as always, is because it gives us a boost in the algorithm. The podcast app that you're using thinks, oh, man, this is a cool podcast, so I'm going to refer it to other people. Because if the user thinks enough of this podcast to go out and click the rating, then write a review for the show, it must be a good show. And I'm going to recommend it to other people who listen to similar type programs. So that's an easy, free really quick way that you can help the podcast get out to more earballs, as my good friend Daniel likes to say. Speaking of Daniel Elwood and Robert Johnson over at the Actual Anarchy podcast, we're going to do a crossover episode. The guys over at Actual Anarchy, I've been on their podcast several times, and what they do is they take movies and they review them from an anarcho-capitalist perspective. My latest appearance was with Instant Family, where we reviewed Instant Family, talked about, you know, our story of adopting from foster care, and then also just kind of examined that to what the movie was like, how real a representation was that, and then we just kind of talked in general about the foster care system. So if you're interested, you can go out to actualanarchy.com slash 180, And you will hear my latest appearance on the Actual Anarchy podcast to discuss Instant Family. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a crossover episode. I watched The Gentleman over the Christmas holidays, and I really enjoyed it. Matthew McConaughey owns several cannabis farms. So we're going to talk about that movie, review it, and then talk about maybe what would life look like in a society where cannabis wasn't illegal and that sort of thing. So 
anyway, look for that to come out soon. We may actually do a live YouTube event on that. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube page, if you'll go to CannabisSealsMe.com slash YouTube, that link will take you directly to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe. We post all the podcast episodes out there. Well, most of them, when I'm not being too lazy to post them out there, we post those out there. And if we wind up doing a live feed for our crossover episode with Actual Anarchy, we will post it out on our YouTube page. So go out to CannabisSalesMedia.com slash YouTube, subscribe to that, click the little bell so that you will get notified when and if we do go live with that and anytime other episodes come out. If you prefer to listen to podcasts on YouTube for whatever odd reason some people do. Our guest today is Tanya Sanders. Tanya is a registered nurse and in 2009, she was diagnosed with lupus and she was on prescription medications for you know eight and a half years and finally, the pain management team said, look, there's nothing else we can do for you. So we're going to wean you off some of these medications and we're going to send you home on hospice. And at the time, she was in her mid-30s. And that was a pretty devastating diagnosis for her to hear. So she's going to come on and share her story and share how she learned about cannabis as medicine. So without further delay, here is Tanya Sanders. Tanya, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Rachel. It's absolutely my pleasure. I, like I mentioned previously, I'm kind of trying to get back in the groove of doing podcasts and just have had trouble trying to get connected with people. And so I really appreciate you agreeing to come on and share your story. Hey, it's my pleasure. The more people we can share it to, the better. The more lives we can save, the better. I'm game for anything. I ran across your page on Facebook and you're very active there and you share a lot. And I'm like, well, surely she wants to tell her story. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your condition and, you know, when you were diagnosed and, you know, your journey to find cannabis as medicine. Okay. I kind of have a thing typed up. If you just want me to go ahead and read that, is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Imagine being 35 years old and the doctors have sent you home to wean off all your medications and die. There was nothing left after eight years of fighting. All treatments, medications, surgeries, they have failed. My name is Tanya Sanders. I'm a wife, a mother, an RN, lupus warrior, but most important, I am a survivor. 12 years ago, our perfect life changed just like that. I woke up with severe jawbone pain, and then that's when my downward health spiral started. Doctors started prescribing medication after medication, then the health problems began. I suffered a stroke, meningitis twice, I was in a coma sepsis, cavitary lung disease, just to name a few, in and out of the hospital every month, multiple surgeries, pick lines, chest port, feeding tubes, spinal taps, biopsies, 20-some medications just in the morning, fentanyl patches, IM injections into my thighs, chemo for a year and a half, IV antibiotics 24-7 around the clock. But two years ago, three years ago, actually, I went into pain management, an appointment, and they proceeded to tell me that they were going to start the weaning off process because there was nothing else that they could do anymore. I thought they were crazy. What in the hell was I supposed to do? I'm sitting there literally dying right in front of their eyes, and I could smell myself shutting down. I begged them for help. I begged them just to help me. And they just shipped me right out the door, and they said that they were really sorry. I've never abused or taken, any, taken more of anything in my life than what I'm supposed to. When I got in a car, I ripped up a handful of prescriptions they had just given me. Withdrawals came hard and fast starting just hours after my fentanyl patch was to be changed. I became agitated, nauseated. I started to have seizures. I was suicidal, just like heroin withdrawal. The fourth day in, I begged my husband just to let me end it. I couldn't go on, but we had been researching medical marijuana or cannabis for a while, but I was way too scared to try it. It didn't matter that I was taking enough pharmaceuticals to tranquilize a baby elephant for eight years or the fact that I had questioned or was scared of what the doctors prescribed because they were supposed to help you, right? So our friend came right over and I tried it for the very first time in my life. Within five minutes, everything I had been experiencing for eight, the last eight years and the last four days gone. With tears running down my face, I walked back up to the porch and I said to them, it feels like I did 15 years ago and it feels like I could run. Ever since that day, our lives have changed. I'm, I am living. I can finally be a mom. I can eat on my own. Pain, nausea, controlled. I can walk normally instead of crawling from bathroom to bedroom on my hands and knees and no horrible side effects. I went from death to remission in just two years by using cannabis. Wow. Last, last year, my lupus decided to rear its ugly head and my stomach stopped working. So I had to ha have a peg tube placed again and failed. I started TPN, um, which is nutrition through my port, through the vein. This past November 19th, I became septic and ended up in the hospital for a month. 
I ended up having open heart surgery and and on January 2nd, I, I received an aortic valve replacement from a donor and a root replacement and a mitral valve repair. I ended up in congestive heart failure and also had to be cardioverted due to AFib and A-flutter. Now, since the open heart, I have um, another hole in my mitral valve and my tricuspid valve needs replaced. Um, so I'm going to be going in for another open heart surgery. It's a vicious cycle. Why? Why had only one doctor, doctor mentioned cannabis in only for two seconds and never again? Why wasn't I given the option to try the safest medication first? This should have been my first option instead of a life-saving last choice. This has opened my eyes to a whole new world of medication and a whole new passion. I believe I suffered so, so bad so others don't have to, and now I can actually save lives and be that nurse I set out to be. Our diseases don't change based on what state we live in. Because we live in Ohio, why should we continue to die and suffer? And someone in Colorado can grow and use this medication <clears throat> how they need to. You never know what tomorrow will bring. And what if this 35-year-old was you? Cannabis is the glue that holds me together. Hey guys, wanted to tell you real quick about our podcast host and sponsor, Anchor.fm. If you're thinking about starting your own podcast, I highly recommend Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. They'll distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go out to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. Now back to the show. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> well, thank you. Been a rough road, girl. My goodness. So you were originally diagnosed, what, in 2009? Yep, 2009. And you're, I guess, in the state of Ohio, right? Yes, I am. And what is the legal, for folks that don't know, what is the legal status of cannabis in Ohio? Okay, so Ohio's cannabis laws are crazy. Um, I personally think they are the laughing stock of the nation, and that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio just... Um, we had a 90 day program. They just um, cut it back to a 45 day supply that you're allowed to have now. Um, Ohio sells in tents. We are unable to grow. We are unable to smoke. Um, there's, tw I think, 21 um, diseases or illnesses on our list, unless they added a couple more. Um, they were trying to get autism on there and it failed. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done in Ohio. I mean, patients. I mean, they're suffering, they're dying. I mean, it's so bad that the drugs here are horrible, you know. Cannabis yeah, because can isn't Ohio one of the worst states for, like, um, opioid abuse? Yes, it is. And you think that would uh, open Ohio's eyes and to see that cannabis is, cannabis can help those those addicts. Mm -hmm. You know, just a, just a couple weeks and they're good. You know, instead of getting them hooked on Suboxone. And, you know, all those things that they have to come off of eventually anyway, too. Yeah. Wow. So how long did you go the pharmaceutical route after your diagnosis? Um, eight and a half years. Wow. And so they basically, I mean, it sounds like they're like, okay, this isn't working. So we're just going to make you go cold turkey off all your meds. Okay. So I, whenever I left that appointment, basically they were saying, Tanya, there's nothing else that we can do. We've tried everything and you're still at death's door. So basically we're going to go ahead and send you to hospice. Um, so they didn't even give me the option at pain management to, to use or try cannabis or to even think about it. You know what I mean? They never gave me that option. I just, just the pharmaceutical. And so when I got out to the car, I was so mad. You know, here I am, I'm a nurse. I understand what's going on with my body. You know, no, I've done everything that they said to the T. I yeah. never, never went off track, not one bit. And then they're just going to ship me out the door with nothing. Wow. Yeah. And it you're 30 and you're 35 years old at the time. I was 35. Yeah, I was 35 and a half, almost 36. Wow. I mean, but still a, a young person yeah. at that age. Yep. And they're basically just saying, oh, we're giving up. We're going to put you on hospice. Yep. Just washing their hands on me after, you know, I did everything they said. And then there was this option out there. Are you kidding me? There's mm -hmm. this beautiful medicine that could save, you know what I mean? And yeah. 
help people not suffer. And I was never given that choice. That's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane, but you know, I guess kind of in their defense is they know nothing about the endocannabinoid system. So, cause I'm assuming that when you were in nursing school, you never learned anything about it. Nope. We learned nothing about it. Yeah. And they didn't either. So nope. I guess your opinion, it sounds to me like your opinion about cannabis as a, as a nurse was the same as what, you know, most people yeah. is, you know, the whole dare program and yeah. cannabis the is bad. Blood. You're going to die. Yeah. You're going to kill your mother. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to go rob places. All you're going to do is going to eat on, you know, eat Doritos on your couch all day. Uh -huh. you're gonna be a, a productive member of society. You know, you're going to drive a hippie van. I mean, it's the farthest thing from the truth. The, the cannabis community has taken me in with open arms. Everyone across the United States, different countries. I mean, it's been amazing. They're the most loving, caring group of people I've ever met. And I was, I was taught to be afraid of them my whole life. Yeah. I mean, cause they've just been so maligned and, and that's mm -hmm. been the experience that I've, I've had as well is that they're just, they're, it's a great community of people who really truly care yes. about other people and they yes. want to see people healed. And, and especially people like yourself who have experienced the healing power of cannabis they want the world to know that this plant is not what you have been told about it for 90 years now. Yep, lied to, lied to, lied to. Yes, absolutely. So what was the what was the reception of your family, like um extended family when you told them, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm using cannabis." I mean, did they did they see a change in you before you came out of the closet and told them that you were using this plant? Um, I tried to hide it as best as I could. Um, but they, like you said, people started noticing, oh my gosh, what's Tanya doing? That's so different. She's out. She doesn't look like a zombie. She's not drooling down her face. Like what's going on? Like she looks good. What's going on? You know? And then it started to come out, you know, I started to tell like close my family a little bit and they were upset. They didn't understand. You know what I mean? They've been taught the same way that I've been taught. So I was scared. They were scared that I was going to get, you know, hauled away by the cops mm -hmm. and arrested. And, you know, because I started researching cannabis two years prior to even coming off of all the deciding to come, you know, that that was it. Before they sent me home, I had been researching in the closet, you could say, because I was even scared to even do research on my computer that somebody would find it. Yeah. You know, and know that I was researching cannabis. Why was Tanya looking at cannabis or pot, they call it, or mm -hmm. weed? You know, I mean, why was she looking at that? You know, is she doing it, you know, you know, just for recreational? It was nothing like that. So as I got better and better and better and they saw the changes and they're just now everyone is so supportive. Like I have 110% like uh, support from family, friends, doctors now, you know, everyone's on board. They're finally getting it. They're finally seeing it. The proof is out there. These doctors that say that they don't know and they don't understand the proof is here. It's here. It's there. They just need to open their eyes. Right. And, and even if it's just anecdotal, they can look yep. at you and see the tremendous change from when you were yep. on all the prescription drugs versus now when you're on cannabis. Yep. And I can even eat now. I have no feeding tubes. My stomach is completely working again. Um, I've healed my stomach, you know, since my heart surgery and things like that. I've, I've, uh, with RSO, it's healed my stomach. I have no more feeding tunes. I'm able to eat again. Yeah, because liquid nutrition, that's kind of a, or the IV nutrition, that's kind of like a death sentence there. Yep, yep. That was that, That's what I was on again last year. Another wow. death sentence. And uh, I almost got it, there, <laughs> you know, in um, December, whenever I was in the hot, I got septic again and had to have all this open heart surgery and my heart got infected and I had abscesses in my heart. And, oh my gosh. You know, it was just, a, it was a hot mess just from the TPN and that, you know, that's what caused my infection around my heart. And that's what messed up all my valves. You know what I mean? It was that TPN and that infection because wow. TPN, just a TPN, if anybody, you know, it's a white fluid and it goes right into my, I had a port in my chest, mm -hmm. which I've had multiple, multiple ports, picks, central lines, you name it, I've had it. Um, so it was going right into my port and it got infected and I didn't know. And I got septic and ended up in the hospital for a month. 
Wow. So, yeah. So now I got to go back in for another heart surgery and we're trying to get that scheduled another open heart. So, but I'll be yeah. fine. I'm good. So the, the heart problems, that's not really a cause of the lupus, right? That's more caused by this infection that you got from the, the port. Well, I ha I've had heart things from mm -hmm. my lupus in the past, but nothing like this. Like I had, um, um, like a murmur and I had some regurgitation in my heart from my mitral valve, but I've always, I've had that since I've been younger mm -hmm. and I've, I've, I've had heart issues on and off growing up, but nobody ever put anything together. And that's why I think I was diagnosed with my lupus so late too. Cause I had rashes and things when I was little and nobody, you know I mean? I had different things growing up, but I was really active. You know, I played all the sports I ran track, I did volleyball. So, and then I was sick in between those things and nobody ever put everything together. So I think I've had lupus and I also think that I'm a chronic limer mm -hmm. um, because my grandma um, was one of the first to be tested positive in Ohio back in the 1980s for Lyme disease. And oh, wow. I, gr I grew up in the vet, I grew up in a veterinarian's office. Uh, my grandfather was a veterinarian, so I was exposed to everything. And I had ticks, you know, back in the day, you'd just pull the tick off. You wouldn't think anything about it. You know, your mom would dig through your hair, check for ticks, pull it off, mm -hmm. burn it, squish it, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think deep down inside, I really think that I have uh, Lyme also. And I think other people, and that could be a, a problem with my heart too, is like a Lyme endocarditis on top of everything else. Yeah. So, and lupus affects your heart too. Lupus affects all your organs. I have SLE, which affects everything. So. Okay. What it's is SLE? I'm not a medical person. Okay. So SLE is systemic lupus erythro. I can't even say the last word, but it means it's, it affects all your organs. It can affect your heart, liver, lungs. I mean, everything, uh, everything. There's different kinds of lupus. There's um, lupus that just involves your skin. Um, there's lupus that neonatals get from lupus positive mothers. Mm -hmm. There's uh, also drug induced lupus with certain medications that can cause lupus. So there's different kinds and people need to be aware of that too. And uh, May 15th was actual, actually um, lupus awareness day. Okay. So that just passed. So I supported my purple for that and just education, education, education is a big yes. thing. I was not aware that you could actually get lupus from different medications. That's insane. Yep. Yes, you can. I don't, I don't remember hearing that on the uh, disclaimers on the TV ads. <laughs> yeah, they don't say that, do they? <laughs> no, no, missed that totally. Wow. Uh -huh. So give us a little a glimpse into to what life was like when you were on what you said, 20 medications just in the morning? Yeah, just in the morning. Okay, so basically... I mean, it's hard for people to hear. Basically, I was a vegetable. Mm. Uh, um, my kids, I have two daughters. Um, they're, they, um, I have a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old. Um, so my 13-year-old's only known me really when, since I've been sick. Yeah. Um, so they were taking care of me, you know, and they were wow. just babies themselves, just yeah. little kids. You know, they were trying to take care of me. Um, you know, back in the day, my heart would just stop. All of a sudden, they found me on the floor. You know, one time I can remember, I'll tell you guys a story. This is how bad I was. Okay. So my daughter's school, whenever she was in elementary, was like right across the road up the hill. And it's right when I got like diagnosed, maybe a year late, year into my diagnosis, they were out on recess and I just got home. I forget with my mother-in-law, I was out with her somewhere and I was like, you got to get me home. Something's not right. Something's going to happen. And so I, she dropped me off at the pool on my porch and I walk, I remember walking up the steps and I just hit the porch mm -hmm. and that's when I had my stroke. And so my daughter is across the school parking lot, you know, in the playground watching her mom be hauled away by the ambulance and she can't get to me. Mm. So, I mean, it, I was in and out of the hospital, in and out, infection after infection. I mean, it was a vicious cycle. You know, they'd put me on one medication. That medication would work at the beginning, like all medications, you know, mm -hmm. they work at the beginning and then I would start to get side effects, start to get side effects. And then they, for those side effects, they'd add some more medicine, you know? So 
medicine after medicine. It was just a vicious, vicious cycle. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned that you were having to crawl from the bed bedroom to the bathroom. So you, yep. all the meds they had you on, you couldn't even stand up and walk. No. I mean, I was that, and I was out driving. <gasps> oh, know? wow. Yeah. I, I mean, when I can make it to the vehicle to drive, I thought I was normal. You know, when people... <laughs> When people are on that, that, those pharmaceuticals, they don't think anything's wrong with them. You know, they think that they're perfect, and they're really not. I was far from perfect. I shouldn't have been behind the wheel not one time. Well, you think this is from a doctor. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, total, totally fine. Yep, totally. What has been the reaction of your former colleagues in your profession as far as, you know, them seeing with their own eyes the change that, that you've experienced? Um, they didn't believe, they didn't understand it at the beginning either, because like you said, we weren't taught in nursing school. We mm -hmm. weren't taught about the ECS. Um, we didn't know nothing about it. So they didn't understand how a plant was doing that much for me and yeah. how come they weren't able to talk about it with the other patients that they were seeing. Mm -hmm. How come, how come they couldn't explain to their patients what I was doing and maybe help them out? Maybe bring them back for a little bit, ease their suffering, you know, and they can't, you know, they can't openly talk about it. Right. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. It blows my mind that, that we're, you know, the medical professional needs to get on board. Nurses need to get on board. You know, that's why I do a lot with the walk for change and nurses mm -hmm. for change, ladies for change. Like we're trying to break the stigma trying to get the medical professionals on board and educated. And we have people out there that can do that. Yeah. I had uh, a lady named Denise Foster on the program last year, and she actually wrote a chapter for an upcoming nursing, uh, like a, a book that's going to yep. be, yeah, that's going to, it's a chapter on the endocannabinoid system. So it looks like the nursing profession has been a little more flexible and, and willing to get on board with learning about the endocannabinoid system as opposed to the, the doctors on their yep. side of it. Yeah. The doctors, I, I mean, I could, the nurses are definitely on board, mm -hmm. I think all the way a hundred percent. But the, like you said, with the doctors, you know, they're going to lose business. Yeah. They're going to lose their patients because their patients aren't going to need them as much because they're using holistic, natural medicine that they could, should be able to grow you know, us patients, like I said, Ohio, we can't grow medicine here. And the dispensaries are so outrageous. Patients, patients, when they've been chronically ill for a long time, they don't have the money to spend in the dispensary. Exactly. You know? It's crazy to me the prices and stuff that the pay, that these dispensaries are charging. There has to be some kind of, we have to do something to, for patients to be able to grow or have a caregiver grow for them. Has to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not that... Yeah, I don't want to blame the dispensaries all the way because the the regulations, the hoops the that they have to jump through. I mean, mm -hmm. the regulations surrounding it is what increases the price. Yeah. For, for and then if you're in a state where they say, oh well, only you know you can only have this many dispensaries. Well, then yeah. that that also pushes down uh, competition, and it you know anytime there's less of something, there's going to be the price is going to be a lot higher. But yep. yeah, I mean, home grow solves a lot of those problems. Yep. That way people can actually grow their own medicine and they don't have to go out to the black market yep. and take a, a a chance on getting something that's, you know, got pesticides or, yep. you know, mold. mold or whatever in it. Yep. That's what I was, I was reading something the other day about, um, like hyperemesis syndrome. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is, um. Uh, there was a lady on there that her husband had developed the hyperemesis syndrome and he's, and they were like, I've been smoking for 25 years and now I'm, you know, he can stop puking, 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 you know, and he was using the black market. Yeah. Who knows, you know, that I think it's, what is it? Neem oil or something yes. like that. They yes. spray on it and like, pe like you said, pesticides, all that stuff that they're putting on them and trying to make these huge, big plants to get more, you know, buds out of them, who knows what they're spraying on them and who mm -hmm. knows, you know, I mean, you just have to be careful. You have to know your source, you know, it's, we have to be able to grow. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, if they're sick and they don't have somebody that can do that for them, then home growth's not the answer for them. 
because they don't, they're not physically capable. But I mean, just, I mean, the government just needs to get out of it. They need to butt out. I mean, it's a plant for God's sake. Yep. And caregivers. And then that way the caregivers can gift. Mm -hmm. You know, states have where, where they can gift. And I love that idea. You know, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to gift this beautiful medicine. I want to show people what it can do and how it can improve their life and, you know, like you said, it's just a plant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the government has just been so focused on lying about this plant for 90 years. That's what's insane to me. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you, you know, as well as anybody, you try to talk to people about it and they think you're some sort of fruitcake. And I mean, the government yep. would never lie to us. No, this is never. a terrible thing. You shouldn't even question the fact that they're telling you not to smoke this plant. I mean, look at the medications, okay? So let's look at medications from 90-some years ago. Medications had cannabis in it. Mm -hmm. The cows were eating hemp, you know, in the fields. They were eating on the hemp, you know, getting it into them. You know, then they decided to take it away, and all these diseases and illnesses start popping up. Right. You know, they're not stupid. They're not dumb. So now they're afraid. That's what a lot of people say is that our all these autoimmune disorders that we have are a result of our endocannabinoid system basically starving. Yep, depleted. It's it's completely depleted. Our body it needs this. It it's 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 like earning for it. You know what I mean? And then we get all these diseases and then the pills and then that's just starts a whole gamut of other problems. Yeah, because like you said, they, they put you on a medication and then that causes a side effect and then they give you another medication to cope to, to cope with that side effect. And then yep. it just snowballs and before you know it you're taking twenty pills in the morning yep. and you can you have to crawl from the bathroom to the bedroom. Yep, but that's all right. And you go to the doctor, then that's all right. You tell them exactly what you're taking, what you're doing. They see physically how shitty you are doing. Yeah. And they don't do anything about it. They yeah. don't and don't you it. dare smoke a plant. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare because it's the devil's lettuce. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'll do bad things. I mean, we already went over that. It's just create. I mean, we have to come together. And that's why, you know, coming together as one big group, we all want the same goal. We all have the same common thing thing that we want. We want our each patient to be able to use this plant how they need to, when they need to, and the amount they need to. Yeah. No questions asked. Everybody's different. Everybody requires all different milligrams, different kinds, different ways to use this medicine. There's so many different ways you know, one way might not work right for one patient. It might work great for the next. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, sorry, I'm long-winded. <laughs> no, you're fine. I, I think that's probably one of the most difficult things about this journey is finding what consumption method, what strain of plant, what, what mix of CBD to THC yep. you need, what terpenes you need. So, I mean, that's yep. the hardest thing about this plant. I mean, I guess the the nice thing about dispensaries is is that some of those people are, are pretty knowledgeable and can give you advice on that. But, I mean, it really is just kind of a hunt and peck search at the yep. beginning. It is. And, you know, I tell all my patients, you know, you know, keep a journal, you know, start low, go slow mm-hmm. with everything, even if it's low milligrams. You know, start low, go really slow, just test it out, see how yeah. you feel in an hour, write it down. You know, write that strain that you just got at the dispensary. Write that down. See what it helps. See if it helps your pain, anxiety. If you have nerve pain, did it help your nerve pain? That way you're, you can go back in that journal, see what helped, what, you know, what strain helped me whenever I was having a bad day with my back pain. Go to that, say, oh, oh, it was Blue Dream. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to get some Blue Dream. I'm having some back pain. You know what I mean? Something like that. So just keep a journal. Go low and slow. You know, guinea pig yourself. You're not going to die. No one's ever died from using cannabis, you know. Mm -hmm. Look how many people die from taking Tylenol every year. I mean. Exactly. So you're going to be okay, you know, just, you know, and if you feel too high, take a little bit of CBD that counteracts it, bring you down a little bit, eat something, you know, get something in your gut, um, drink some ice water. You know, those are little tips and tricks, you know, if you do overdo it a little bit, you know, that I've used and, you know, back in the day when I first started, 
you know, to kind of help. And that's why I do all my Zooms and things like that. I love doing education and, you know, we get in there and we talk about different tips and tricks, you know, some, somebody might be listening that needs that tip or trick. Yeah. I think that's great advice as far as keeping the journal goes. I mean, that's, that's probably good advice for any medication, let alone a medication that you're not really sure how your body's going to react to. Yeah. And your doctors, you know, when you do go to the doctor, you got to be, you got to be in charge of your own health care. And I've learned that the hard way, you know, even though I am a nurse, I had learned the hard way that I am an, I am the one in charge of my health care. They're not, you know what I mean? Ask questions, ask why you're taking this, ask how long you're going to have to be taking this. And I'm not saying all pharmaceuticals are bad. You right. know, don't get me wrong. You know, I take some pharmaceuticals now because of my, with my heart stuff now. So I have to take some blood thinners and a heart medication and aspirin. And, you know, so I still use a couple pharmaceuticals, but most of my other medication is all cannabis and mm-hmm. I can control different symptoms, different things with different, you know, consumption methods, just like we were talking about. So, I mean, there's so many different ways and options. I think just if you're on the fence, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. Do your research. Absolutely. What are some good resources that you could recommend to folks? Maybe somebody just recently was diagnosed with lupus and they want to explore different options for medicating. Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of some good good ones right off the top of my head. Um, oh my gosh, my brain is like having a brain fart. <laughs> I have no so worries many groups and everything that I post to that, um, and, and watch. Um, let's see. Um, if you want to message them to me, I can yeah, put them can in the show notes you. for today's yeah, episode. I'll yeah. I'll message them to you. That's I'll perfect. You That's list. perfect. Well, I guess most importantly, where can folks follow you? Okay. So I have my regular personal Facebook page, which anybody can send me a friend request. I'm pretty open and easy. So it's under Tanya San. T-O-N-Y-A-S-A-N. And then I also have um, a page that I do my videos on and Mm -hmm. I do Zoom rooms and it's Tanya San, my pain, my battle, my story. And I post um, a lot of education and stuff on there. So feel free to join and send me a friend request and we'll get you on. And I'd love for people to join my Zoom rooms and That's a lot of, we do tons of education in there because it's real life people. That's awesome. My friends, it's my friends that I've known for a year, a couple of years. We get on there. We do a ton of education. So, I mean, and plus we have fun, we dance, we have music. I mean, we show bongs and we show pipes and we show different tinctures and butters and magic butter machines. I mean, we show everything. So nothing's off limits in my Zoom room. We talk about everything. Well, that's great. Well, I will put links to your Facebook page, both your personal and then also your, um, the, my pain, my battle, my story. And then if you'll send me links for, for lupus related resources or any other resources that you think are, are good for folks that are exploring cannabis as medicine, I'll put links to those as well on the, uh, show notes for today's episode. Absolutely. You've been amazing. Well, so have you, it's been great talking to you and I, and I, you know, I, I like, talking to anybody, but it's also kind of nice to talk to someone who is a nurse and kind of knows, you know, where people that are in the medical profession are coming from and can kind of speak to that. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll speak to anybody and I always do education. I wear my shirts, my socks, my mask with my cannabis. I want people to come up and ask me (laughs) questions. I want people to ask me, why are you wearing that? Then, you know, maybe I can impact them and change somebody, you know, helps change somebody's life, you know, save it. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, Tanya. And I'm, I'm glad that you found cannabis as medicine because it looks, I mean, you were basically sent home to die and, and here yep. you are still alive and kicking. Yep. Like a cat. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a bunch, Tanya. And I really appreciate you coming on well, and, and sharing your story today. Thank you so much. Anytime, girl. Anytime. That sounds great. All right. Appreciate All right. it. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Show notes for today's episode can be found out at CannabisSealsby.com slash 110. Thank you once again to Tanya Sanders for joining us today and sharing her story. Be sure and check out her page. Again, that'll be linked out at the show notes page for today's episode, CannabisSealsby.com slash 110. Tentatively, we should be back here on Thursday with another educational episode of the Cannabis Sealsby podcast. 
But I'm not 100% sure on that because I'm still trying to get the schedule nailed down. And you just never know if something's going to come up and derail it. But, you know, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We should have an educational episode on Thursday of this week for you. The one way to make sure that you don't miss out on that is to go out and subscribe. Click that subscribe button out on your favorite podcast app. Before I let you guys go today, I have some sad news to share. And I got an email from Angie Finn, who appeared back on episode 72. I got an email from her sister letting me know that Angie had passed away recently. And I'm just absolutely heartbroken to hear that Angie had five kids and was very important to her to her siblings and it's it's been a a tough loss for them and and I just wanted to ask if you guys would be in prayer for their family and just hold them up and and ask for the Lord to give them comfort during this very difficult time and um you know I guess that's just I've never no one else on the that has come on the podcast has passed away and and it just kind of drives home the the magnitude of the illnesses that we cover on this show that, you know, it actually does take people's lives. I mean, not that I'm unaware that people can't die from Crohn's. I had a good friend who, who passed away from Crohn's. It it really struck me. And, um, and I only talked to Angie once. I I can't imagine, you know, I, I feel very, very sad about hearing of her passings. I can't even fathom how difficult this must be for her family. So again, if you guys would just keep them in prayer, I would, I would appreciate it. And I'm, and I'm certain that they would as well. If you didn't listen to Angie's episode, I I encourage you to go back and listen to episode 72. And, um, my condolences, my, my heart for for condolences and that, you know, it, it just doesn't seem like enough to say, Oh, my condolences. I'm so sorry to hear you lost your sister. I mean, that just, the words are just, they pale, in comparison to that, to the magnitude of that loss. So, I mean, it it just doesn't seem like enough to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for your loss, because it's, it's not enough. I mean, there's no words that can bring comfort, but I know that there is someone who can bring comfort to her family, and I hope and pray that they, they turn to him in this very difficult time. So, to the Finn family, Please know that you're in my prayers, and uh, I think of I'll think of Angie often. She was a she was a great lady, to, and just in the brief amount of time that I got to talk to her, I, I could tell she was a fighter, and became an, a very outspoken advocate for the plants. So I, I feel honored and privileged to have spoken to her, and you know, I, I know that one day I will get to meet her in person, and I know that one day. I'll actually get to see her. We will be back here most likely on Thursday with an educational episode. Until then, you guys have a great week. Stay safe and stay free. Hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode of the Cannabis Heals Me podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please consider leaving us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or whatever podcast app you're using. Do you have a suggestion for a guest on Cannabis Heals Me? send an email to podcast at CannabisHealsMe.com. We'd love to hear from you. Please do not take any information from Cannabis Heals Me or its guests as medical advice. Contact your licensed physician before taking cannabis or using it for medical treatments.